National Chairman of People's Democratic Party, PDP, Uche Secundus, fights for survival as party's federal lawmakers ask him to go. And how effective is the COVID-19 vaccine? A doctor will be here to tell us what we need to know. Also coming up is a review of Monday's sit-at-home order by the indigenous people of Biafra. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Good morning. My name is Annette Felix. Good morning. I am Osaogi Ogbonwa. Welcome to uh, the Tuesday morning edition. It seemed like it was going to rain this morning. Uh, so just be uh, at alert and go out with your umbrellas if you have to. We hope you have a great time with us this morning. Indeed. Uh, talking about having a great time, I already am having a great time because the top trending stories this morning, beginning with the one with the Twitter ban, you know, just really interests me. First of all, we know that Nigeria banned Twitter um, a few uh, months ago, um, saying that the social um, networking platform undermines the existence of Nigeria. We know how that followed, um, you know, the fact that Twitter had deleted the tweets by the president that seemed to threaten war and uh, a particular ethnic group in the country. Now, on June 8th, um, Femi Bajabiamela shut down a, a debate regarding the ban on Twitter. But then we found out that on Twitter spaces, um, Femi Bajabiamela snuck into Twitter to be a part of that conversation. It's, uh, you know, lots of Nigerians have been reacting to this, saying this is just hypocritical. If you are against the ban, against, you know, Twitter um, continuing to thrive in Nigeria, and you basically shut down that debate in the House, why did you find your way using a VPN to come, you know, on Twitter, the same very, the very platform that you shut down um, to go ahead to, to use that platform and be a part of the conversations? So, you know, people just went on to say, this is just hypocritical. Are you for it? Are you against it? And, you know, just all that conversations about people not putting their money where their mouth is or saying one thing and doing another. Yeah, um, so I saw a lot of response, uh, responses to that um, well, story. Um, many people were of the opinion that, you know, he should have been kicked out of the, you know, conversation. You know, uh, if, if you're one of the people who ensured that Twitter was suspended in Nigeria, you supported it, you shut down the conversation, then what are you doing here? You know, that you should have been um, kicked out, you know, deleted or blocked or something, you know, from that conversation. Um, which, of course, they have a right to say. There's also those who, you know, also blame the person who started the Twitter conversation also. Uh, to the space conversation what i'm not entirely sure of is if he you know snuck in or if he was invited um i think you know there has to be a link i'm not sure but i think there has to be a link that is sent to you so that you can you know join in or you see it on you know the top of your twitter page and then you can click in you know to you know get in, in, into that conversation so i'm not sure which happened if he was invited or well, he's not invited by himself. or whatever it, it takes well, you to twitter yeah so yeah, if but, twitter is banned and you're so, not using a vpn you're not supposed to be able to even access the page so so, so um i just put, thought to point that out you know that when i'm not sure nobody is actually sure if he was invited or he's knocking by himself um there is of course the you know, views like you've mentioned, you know, what on earth are you doing here if you, you know, ask that Twitter be suspended? Um, if when there was meant to be a conversation about lifting the ban or not, you know, you shut that down, you know, then what are you still doing here? And, you know, isn't it shameful that, you know, someone as high ranked as he is, is using VPN to assess Twitter? That's actually shameful and embarrassing um, for, you know, someone at, you know, at his level. Um, you know, but it really just shows that a lot of these people make these decisions not because they truly believe in the things that they are saying. Um, it, it's, it's a decision that, you know, it's very similar to many other decisions that some of these people, you know, make. And statements that they say, they don't really believe in the things that they are saying. When they go out there and tell you that this is what the government has said or this is the new directive of the government, a lot of times they don't really agree with it or believe in it. They are just saying it because they don't want to sound otherwise. I'm sure that he also doesn't agree that Twitter is causing issues in Nigeria so or is a essence threat of to being Nigeria. In such a high ranking position in the country if your voice can be heard. Really? Why if why be there if if you can't say what you mean? If you can't act with integrity, that's that's what I'm saying. Uh, well, it, why it, be there as a puppet? It tells just... you and that's why you know I, I said that a lot of people don't a lot of them don't actually believe in things that they say or the things Meaning that they do. Meaning that they, they lack do. integrity. So, it's, it's Absolutely, it's... but it really which Nigerian politician are you going to point out and say oh, this one has integrity? There's not very many of them. You can't count 5 of them. So you know, integrity is not one of the things that you put side by side with a Nigerian politician. Um, they don't have it. 
Uh, they didn't come with it. They are not going with it. They don't buy it, you know, while they're in the house. And so, you know, that's really what it shows. Um, it's embarrassing for him. Um, I would always allow or agree that, or I didn't agree rather with those who said he should have been kicked out. You know, he's, you know, one of the people that you're speaking against. So what is he doing there? Because I always feel like there should be a space for everyone to, you know, have their say, you know, regardless of what your views are, have your say. But in this particular case, it's embarrassing for him to have to go download VPN. Femi Wajabi Amila. <laughs> download VPN, install it on his device and use it, you know, to be active on Twitter. It's really, really embarrassing. Um, and... I'm, I'm not sure, you know, what he thinks, you know, of all of this. All I'm saying is, if at the end of the day, the AGF and the rest are going ahead to prosecute Nigerians who have been using Twitter through VPNs, Femi Bajabiamela should also be picked up. Well, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen either. That's an example of something that they also say. all the other politicians yeah. that do that. It's just an know. example of, one, once again, of one of the things that they say that they don't really believe in, including the means of information. A lot of these statements are really just, well, this is the direction the government wants us to go, so let's just go ahead and say it. We don't necessarily believe in these things that we're saying. A lot of them. Um, and these moves, these, you know, you know, theories that they put out there, oh, that Twitter is undermining Nigeria's security and undermining Nigeria's unity, they all know that that is, you know, mm -hmm. total bollocks. You know, it's just, well, that's what has to be said. Mm. Moving on to our next uh, top trending story. While there are lots of Nigerians in diaspora doing us proud, winning bronze and silver medals, and just, you know, thinking of ways to make life better using technology, we definitely know that there are those bad eggs, um, like the suspended aide to Ogun State Governor Abidemi Rufai, who has been charged of $350,000 fraud in the United States. So the United States government has actually released a 97,000-page document, basically just outlining all the fraud he's committed. He stole the identities of um, United States citizens, um, went ahead to have variations of one single email, and that's so he can bypass the tech check and um, use that to file unemployment claims because obviously because of the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, the United States have been given stipends to citizens, you know, um, to alleviate the impact of the COVID-19 on their businesses and the rest of them, their income. So he went ahead, stole the identities of US citizens, um, continued to make changes to one particular email address, evading all the, you know, technology um, uh, checks that have been put in there. And he stole as much as 350000 United States dollars. Allegedly. Allegedly, yes, allegedly. But they have the they have the documents, they have the they have the facts, you know, to prove that. Um, he was arrested at GFK Airport May 14th um, on alleged, you know, theft, unemployment fraud. And his his scheduled trial is August um, 31st, later this month, 2021. I mean, this this is this is serious. For so the fact that the US prosecutors could go ahead you know, take time, do their research, do their investigation. I was able to file a 97,000-page document. That's, that's impressive. Um, Still something that the Nigerian government should learn from. So two angles for this one is, first of all, you know, a couple of days ago we heard that, you know, the uh, UAE had granted uh, Ghanaians, you know, visa fee and uh, free entry into um, United Arab Emirates. And, you know, so, so, you know, the arguments for that were really... Um, you know, the, the Ghanaian government being able to position its, itself better, you know, being able to portray, you know, its citizens and its country as a better place uh, than it was in the past, and the Nigerian government failing to do so. And also, because of the, you know, activities and the, the things that Nigerians have done the, in these countries, in the UAE, in Malaysia, in Singapore, in China, everywhere in the mm -hmm. world. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough of, you know, people put, putting out the great things that Nigerians are doing. Um, and celebrating them enough, you know, what we hear are these bad stories. So he's one example. Um, he's another example of, you know, another bad egg, I guess, you know, another uh, bad example of Nigerians who go to different countries and commit these very, very heinous crimes. Um, you know, pretty much same with um, Hosh Poppy. Uh, but, you know, some other angle for this really is the fact that the Nigerian police, the Nigerian security agencies, they arrest first, and then they look out for reasons why they arrested you. Yeah, accusatorial so, system. Yeah, you know, however that, that has been named. So what they do is they arrest first. And I said it yesterday, I saw a video yesterday that, mm -hmm. you know, was saying that the EFCC or some other, you know, agency had stopped some uh, two guys in the car here in Lagos. And, you know, they, they took over their car and they were taking them to the station and all of that. And that's exactly what it meant. So they look at you, you look rich, they arrest first. Mm -hmm. Then they, you know, look out for evidence, you know, to tell you why they arrested you. In the moment, you don't know why you've been arrested. They don't even know why they arrested 
interesting you, but you know you, you have you, to you, you, you know find out. out at the station, <laughs> and then you know while you're there, they start searching for reasons why they arrested you. And even and if you don't, evidence. Yeah, and if you don't, and they, if they don't find any reasons why they arrested you, you mm -hmm. still have to bail yourself because they arrested you for no reason, and they couldn't find any reason. And so you have to bail yourself for doing nothing. <laughs> That is, you know, the Nigerian you know, security agency's modus operandi. In Sena climbs, they take out time. Which, which case in the history of Nigeria has had a 5,000-page document, you know, as evidence? You would even pay to write a statement. Which so, case have we ever, you know, been able to investigate on that level that it has you will pay the documentation? Police. You will pay the police for Biro to write your statement. I'm just saying. You so, will pay the so police we, money to track your phone. I saw a statement yesterday on social media. Asides, we paid, aside the part where... No, no hold on. This is, this is just a fact of our, of our own Nigerian reality, right? Someone said she paid 30,000 naira to a police officer to track her phone. She never got the phone. She never got a refund. No, good luck That's, to her. <laughs> so, I paid... No, hold on. I'm coming. I paid the police when I was in Adamawa State money to track my stolen laptop. I never got a refund. I never got my money back. Since money did from you get charge card and all of that. So it, in Nigeria, it is... It is, you know, victims that sponsor justice. You're, you're going to, I'm not going as far as, you know, how much you have to pay in order to get justice. I'm saying, I'm starting from the scratch. The fact that they don't even bother, you know, with that level of investigation. They simply just smell that this person might be a criminal. And that's all they need to arrest you and to, and to carry out investigations. There's so many of these criminals that are walking around the streets in Nigeria today, that I'm sure that the police know. They are living, they are doing, living their normal lives. They know that they can't travel to the U.S. They know that they are wanted in many countries in the world. But our system here doesn't care or doesn't bother with that type of investigation. As as you and it's pretty much the same yeah, thing. Yeah, your bodyguards, your escorts. Pretty much the same thing with every case that has gone to court, you know, from the EFCC that they've lost in court because of a very, very shabby investigation. See, one question I want to ask. If, you know, an aide to a governor, right, was able to go to the U.S. and commit such a crime, but because of just how great the system is and how it works, they eventually was able to apprehend him, right? But you come down here to Nigeria, it makes you ask just how much money have these people or might these people have stolen, undetected, maybe even with accomplices, uh, and nobody's asking questions. Anyway. Let's, let's quickly move on to our next top trending story. It's about the IPOB. They issued their sit-at-home order. There were lots of back and forth regarding that. We had a statement from um, Inam Dikano's younger brother coming out to say that um, because of the NECA exams, they were going to make sure that children of Biafra you know, would be able to go ahead with their examination, um, and uh, they were going to suspend that till after. But then another statement surfaced that we saw on the Vanga newspaper yesterday from Emmanuel Powerful, the spokesman of the IPOB, saying any statement that didn't come from him or Radio Biafra, you know, is not valid and that is the, the sit-at-home order, the ghost Mondays continue. I mentioned seeing a couple of um, um, posts on social media regarding um, the sit-at-home order, states and um, streets deserted. We had a, a, a correspondent in Imo State come on yesterday to give us the situation report where he was. According to him, where he was at that time, you know, there was no compliance with the sit-at-home order. But about 24 hours later, we're seeing that most states complied, Imo, Enugu, and some other states, including Eboi. And the sad thing with the story is the fact that the level of violence, basically, where we've gotten reports that IPOB members went on to um, destroy the goods of traders. Um, about six people have been killed, allegedly, um, including four policemen and about three other people injured, um, buses burnt, just chaos. And this was a question I asked our guest Victor Okai yesterday. I'm like, we've seen situations like this many, time bef many times before where, you know, groups like the IPOB, um, Yoruba Nation, all of that, they go ahead to announce protests, sit at home orders like this. And the response of Nigeria's law enforcement agencies are the same across board. We've seen the same here. Um, according to them, Police operatives went ahead to attack um, some ESN members. They went to the police station to attack back. And only God knows where this really is going. Um, so the, um, the narrative, you know, that I've read from here is really the, the fact that, um, you know, when you are fighting, you know, uh, tyranny for a bit, um, eventually you become, you know, a tyrant. Um, and that's what IPOB is showing with the fact that they have to force people, you know, and, and coerce people with violence or whatever, you know, other, um, you know, methods that they have to obey their orders. Um, 
So if you give them the power that they seek and you give them the freedom that they seek, they probably would be the same thing that they are fighting against now. They probably would be as, you know, as, as deadly or as, or as you know, um, tyrannical as they um, are, are fighting against currently or they claim to be fighting against. Um, if nobody respects you enough to obey your sit-at-home order, it really just shows the level of um, belief that people have in the cause that you are fighting. Um, and they should really be careful because, you know, they are more and more steps getting closer to completely losing the, the what, whatever goodwill that people had for them before. Um, the cause for self-determination and the cause for, you know, the, in, that they have, uh, that they are fighting for, the IPOB itself, is a cause that a lot of, you know, people in the Southeast actually do believe in. Um, they may have different methods. They may have totally different ideologies concerning how to achieve that. And not just in the Southeast, it was around, the, you know, the, the, the continent. Um, might believe, you know, very much. But immediately you then become um, a tyrant also. Then you lose the goodwill and nobody wants to be on the same page with you. They would rather, you know, stick with the Nigerian side and say, okay, well, these guys are becoming, you know, too, too violent. They are not, this is not what we are, we're fighting for. And so that's, you know, what I would say to them. Continue breaking people's shops, continue, you know, burning police stations, continue doing whatever you think, you think it is that you're using to achieve your goal. Eventually, you're going to be losing more members, more mothers and parents are going to be losing their sons because of this, you know, violent ESN or IPOB group that you've decided to join. And eventually, most people in Southeast are going to completely denounce you and say this is not what the, you know, the cause for Biafra is all about. Um, when it was headed, when the Masop was headed by Rafa Wazirike, I don't remember that there was any level of violence on this level or burning of police stations or killing of policemen or burning of INEC offices allegedly by the ESN. Um, but it has moved to a totally different level now. Nambikano doesn't seem to be able to preach a message of self-determination, preach a message of whatever it is that the IPOB is going for and, and at the same time be peaceful and rem remind his members to be law-abiding. Um, and as he continues to fail in that regard, even if now he is in incarceration, as he continues to fail in that regard, they will continue to lose the goodwill that people supposedly had of them. You cannot force people into, you know, whatever you want them to believe. You I should agree. find ways I to agree. convince them that that is the right way to go. And if you oh. failed in that regard, then you failed entirely. Also, um, still regarding the question I asked yesterday, how exactly does this help, you know, force the hand of a government to release an Amdekano? It doesn't in any way. Really? Anyway, um, here's where we uh, draw the curtain on top trending. We'll take a break to return with Off the Press and analyze the day's papers.